Afternoon, Gary, you're right. Um, the result against Wolves must have given you such a big boost and the players as well this week. Um, and that pressure must have really sort of lifted that first win uh, in, in such a while. Um, do you feel that was like an ugly battling display as well, which is good to see from your side? Um, yeah, I think yeah, win, winning football matches always gives us a place to lift, of course. Um, and results-wise, obviously, we were on a, we were on a tricky run. So... Um, and I felt it was what the lads deserve for the work they've put in since, well, the work they always put in, but definitely since Nottingham Forest, where he sort of managed to turn result, uh, turn performances a little bit and looked a little bit more of a threat. Um, I thought, yeah, at Wolves, we had to dig in a little bit, but there was no real, not, not too much really, just balls into the box that the lads dealt with very, very well. So, yeah, it was a, was a good win, has obviously helped spirits around the place. Boys are, boys are in a good spot, and we know we have... Um, Difficult game coming up tomorrow that they're that they're getting ready for. Yeah, um, on that, uh, Forest managed to get quite a good result last week against Manchester City, a one-all draw. Um, I'm sure you've analysed it. Do you feel like you can take something from that as well? And um, you know, you show some real defensive solid solidity against Wolves. Um, that's something that maybe you can sort of now show against this this City team that obviously attack well. Yeah, I'm not sure about the the Nottingham Forest game. I think. Man City sh should have won that game comfortably. Um, so yeah, there's there's some stuff teams have managed to do okay against them this year um, in in a few different ways. Um, so yeah, we'll try and find a way that that suits us. Obviously, suits the personnel that we have. Um, yeah, and see if we can see if we can restrict them to as little as possible and uh, and try and be a threat as well at the same time. Lots of talk about how Erling Haaland has changed the way City play. Do you think, or do you agree, that it's made them sort of easier to predict in terms of how they play, how they set up? No, no. I think he, his goals are, yeah, his goals record is fantastic. I think, um, yeah, there's still a threat from so many different areas of the pitch. They, they can hurt you with a the ball. They can hurt you by being direct and behind. They're good from set plays. They can play round you. They can play over you. So yeah, they're, they're still a very, very good side in most of the metrics. They're the, Best side in the league, so um, yeah. No, I feel like they'll feel like come the end of the season, everyone will, will see them pretty much where you expect them to be. Um, it's been almost two years, I guess, two years yesterday that you came here as an assistant coach. How would you sum up the last twenty-four months, if you can? Uh, yeah, enjoyable. Firstly, I think um, obviously st stopping playing is is never easy, especially when it's a, an injury that, that causes it. So to go from Stopping playing, doing a while at, at um, a little while at Liverpool, um, who, who helped me, of course. So, and then come down here to help to help Jonathan, and um, yeah, we fell just short of promotion the, the first time. But um, one of the remits when I came to the club was to help the club get back to the Premier League. Um, so pleased that I managed to play a part in in that um, at the second time of asking. And now, um, obviously, roles have changed a little bit, and I'm responsible for trying to keep the club in the Premier League, which is. Um, what I spend most of my time now working on. So, um, yeah, I've enjoyed it. It's a fantastic club, um, good people, good staff, fantastic group of players willing to work and a fan base that are always behind the players and um, and support it the, the best they can. So um, an enjoyable, enjoyable couple of years for me. Do you feel like you're further ahead than where you thought you might be? You know, if you look back two years and look where you are now in terms of, like you say, managing a club trying to stay up in the Premier League, like, did you, do you think that that's massive progression for you like as a coach and as a manager yeah I think I'm probably the youngest manager in the league I haven't I haven't checked but I would guess I was um, and yeah I think things have happened maybe quicker than you would you would think sometimes it's hard to plot these sort of journeys sometimes you think I always thought I'd keep playing for a long time because I was fit and I'd probably fall into management from playing at a lower level would would have been my predicted like how I predicted it going um, but yeah we had to take a different route was grateful for the the time at Liverpool and then yeah in the in the hot seat in the Premier League maybe maybe slightly quicker than expected but um yeah I'm enjoying it I love the work and yeah I, I appreciate the the belief and the trust that the club have, have shown in me and and working every hour that I have to to repay that and just finally from me um Anything you can tell us about injuries? Who might be back this weekend? Maybe is is David Brooks like? Is he potentially there now? Would he would he be involved this weekend? No, he, he won't be involved the weekend. He's um, been sort of in modified training this week, so has done some stuff for the lads and um, isn't at full throttle yet, but he's he's close. 
Um, who else? Tav won't make the game after last weekend, so Tav will be missing. Uh, Lloyd Kelly not back yet. Lewis Cook not back yet. Ilya still out. Um, yeah, and I think apart from that, pretty much as we were um, for the Wolves game, so only Tav I would expect to be the only only change to the um, to the squad that was prepared for Wolves. And in terms of Brooks, do you feel like he, he says close? Is uh, we're looking at a week, a couple of weeks now? It depends how the week goes, really. So. Um, Obviously, yeah, uh, uh, a situation that you don't come across that often with what David's been through, um, the injuries as well over the, the last few months. So, yeah, we we see how each day goes, and obviously, if, if I had my wish, I'd I'd have him back in yesterday. Um, but yeah, it's, it's important that we we make sure we do it progressively, and um, I'm sure everyone here would love to see him with a Bournemouth shirt back on and I, I can't wait I'm sure David can't wait um, but let's make sure that let's try and get him back and keep him back and not do anything that is um, is going to be too soon for him Thanks Gary With Marcus you took him off after about an hour was it a recurrence of what he'd been through is it a, you know, just one of those things after you've had a long injury uh, No so yeah Tav, Tav was coming off anyway before he got injured so I was looking to Obviously, it was his first game back, so we had the subs ready. And then, yeah, Tav felt um, a pain in the other hamstring. Um, he wasn't sure if it was a contact. So he's had a, he's had a few things go on this week where he's had some tests and things done. There's a few more to be done early next week. Um, we're hopeful that it's not not too serious, but it's, it's the other side. So um, yeah, we're, we're hopeful that he'll be back soon, but he, he won't play a part this weekend. How big a blow is that? Because the four up front, if you like against Wolves I mean there's so much pace and possibilities in those four. that must really excite you when you've got those four and obviously a couple of others to to come in and offer competition and options as well yeah I think yeah I mean Tav came back scored the winning goal um, was a threat when he carried the ball for us um, as I said on the day I, di I didn't think he was back to his best but he, he definitely helped us um, so yeah lose, losing Tav is, is a blow of course um, Antoine, I thought, did really well when he came on. Um, Jaden as well. So, yeah, I mean, we, we need everybody fit, really, um, ideally, of course, to, to give us the best chance. But injuries happen, things happen. And, um, yeah, thankfully, we've got a little bit more depth now so that um, it's not quite as, as drastic as it could have been before January. Um, you mentioned just now about how much a win lifts spirits and things. After the game in your match of the day interview I think you were asked what it means to you to be out of the bottom three you couldn't have looked more glum and said doesn't matter it's where we are in May does that give us an insight into you know what this job does to you or did, did you really not let yourself enjoy it for even a moment oh, I enjoyed a win um, the league position in February is yeah is is irrelevant really of course I did say this as well that where you are has an impact on where you finish obviously the higher you are now the more chance you have of finishing higher so I understand it um, but the fact that you jump out by a point maybe fall back in by a point I mean if you go up and down with that you you're going to spend a lot of time going up and down so um, yeah I'm hopeful that we can keep going upwards of course. Um, but yeah, the, the small changes in league position and some teams kicking off before us, some teams kicking off after us is, will have no impact on how I feel about our, our, our results. Sorry, I think it. I will always just judge us on what we've done. Um, fantastic victory, delighted for the lads, delighted for the supporters um, and yeah, looking to add more. Take us back to near the start of the season when you, you played City up there and famously kept Haaland very, very quiet. And yet, you know, the rest of the, the team punished punished you. But what can you take from keeping him quiet into Saturday and then sort of, you know, just focusing then on the others, give him more opportunities and things? Or, or you know, can you finesse? Uh, yeah, no, I think it, yeah, uh, Erling Haaland can be quiet and be a threat constantly. So, I mean, you what? sure we all watch games on the television and you read he's maybe only touched the ball eight times or whatever in half an hour, but he still always looks the biggest goal threat. He's constantly running in behind, constantly an option, constantly causing defenders a problem. So, um, 
yeah, I, I, I'm not sure how uh, how quiet we kept him. He didn't he didn't score, of course. Um, but yeah, they they have so many attacking players that we'll need a real good defensive display, of course, um, and we'll need to be a threat to make sure that we we give ourselves a, a chance of of causing them some problems as well. So yeah, a tough ask, but one that that myself, the staff, and and the players are, are really looking forward to is um. It's a game that we go into wanting to win. So um, we, we prep to try and win the football match and give it our best shot. I know you go into every game believing absolutely you can win. And you said that you expect City to be right up there, if not winning the league right up there at the end of the season. But compared to recent seasons, when they've, they've felt from the outside almost invincible, do they feel more vulnerable where they are at the moment? No, I don't think so. I think, um, yeah, I mean, they've... They've drawn two games that um, in the last week that they they should have won. Really, I think. Um, yeah, and I I don't see them as any weaker than they have been. I think each team you can see results, and that sometimes you go through a little spell where they don't quite go your way. Um, but yeah, Man City are still for me the best team in the country, and um, I think it'll be a it'll be an exceptionally tough game for us. Um, but like I say, one that. One that I'm looking forward to, but yeah, I, I don't think they're any easier to beat now than, than they were. And you've often told us that you're chained to your laptop every minute of the day, um, watching training sessions, previous matches, your next opponents and things. Do you ever have time to watch the likes of Man City when they're not the immediate opponent to, to look for ideas and, and things? Yeah, I try and keep up on. Yeah, obviously you look at the best coaches and the best teams and see how they, yeah, what what they do, how they look to cause problems. So, yeah, I, I get I get to watch some of it. Um, the only thing you find uh, as soon as I went into coaching is that you never watch a game just to watch a game. Sometimes you sit down and think, oh, this will be a good game. Let's watch this, and then you're like, oh, let's rewind that and see what. So you end up you end up analysing all of them, even if you don't plan to. Um, but no, yeah, Man City are obviously. Yeah, they're, they're very, very good at a lot of things. So that when you sit and watch them, there's there's a lot to admire and a lot you can learn. Thanks, Gary. Afternoon, Gary. Hi. Gary, at the uh, League Cup final at the weekend, they're going to be putting a sheepskin coat and a microphone in the spot where John Motson used to commentate from. It's going to be a lovely touch. Just give us your memories of him as a lad growing up, listening to him and then commentating on your games. Yeah, I think very, very sad, of course. So, yeah, yeah. Um, Best wishes and thoughts with his his family and and, and close friends. I think he yeah, d devoted his life to Nita football. Um, such a sort of I iconic voice. Um, yeah, I remember even most of my early, some of my early goals, remembering his voice over them. Um, yeah, so he's very 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 sad and and as you say, a very nice touch that um, all the good work he's done and 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 all the that he devoted his life to the game is is being remembered at a, at a big stage on uh, at the weekend um so yeah very very sad i was fortunate enough to meet john a few times he was a yeah great guy who just lived and loved football so um yeah a sad loss two of those goals gary came against manchester city once for middlesbrough one for portsmouth you had a phenomenal playing record against manchester city you beat them three times with Portsmouth and once with Borough, have you got any memories of any of those games? Um, I remember the goal at Borough, um, but yeah, Man, Man City weren't the same then. There was no Haaland and no Pep, so um, it was slightly different, no De Bruyne. But I remember late on in my career getting a real good point against them at Carrow Road when we were trying to avoid relegation. Um, yeah, and Aguero and De Bruyne and that played that day. And I remember how, how hard we worked and what a good team performance we put in to, to manage to get a good result against them. Um, but yeah, so looking forward to tomorrow. Obviously, first, well, second experience. Went there as a, as a coach, obviously, earlier in the season. But um, yeah, look, looking forward to the game and looking forward to seeing what the lads can, can produce in a, in a tough test. Just finally, this, this week, Daniel Ajuajay signed his first professional contract for the club. Only... 17. He will have done a, a hard, hard yards in the academy, but uh, the hard work really is going to continue for him now. Yeah, he's in a good place. Obviously, he's been involved a, a time or two this season already. Um, as you say, still very, very young. Lots of promise. Um, yeah, he's uh, as ability. So lots of hard work, as you say, to do to 
just try and you know that that last gap that you have to bridge as a young footballer the one from youth team football to first team football is the biggest you know as you as you come through the ages you progress fairly evenly and then the last jump you need to make is the biggest one so um yeah still an awful lot of work for him to do but um yeah delighted that he's we've secured his future for a bit longer um and yeah he yeah i'm sure he'll be important to the club moving forward